<laughs> Hello, Anna. Hello, Christian. Hello, teacher. Hello. How do you teacher. feel? Um. So so, <laughs> teacher, I have a problem. What happened, Anna? Um. When I fill the form with the with the academy, mm -hmm. uh, I uh, my my email is uh, I I a mistake about okay. the email. My email is incorrect, and then my I I can ask access to the platform. So how I have you... a problem. Okay. With, with that. How... How did you get the link for here? Yes, I have the link, but when I try to access, mm -hmm. uh, enter my email, uh -huh. correct, correct, in the, the, the my, my email is incorrect in the form in the beginning. This is the problem. I can access because uh, I have a error. Okay, so you have to send an email to to Inglés Corporativo for uh, for the technical department. That way they can fix it. Okay. Or, uh, or in the today, website. Today the, I mm -hmm. I send a message for the WhatsApp on the a person who is. Um, uh, Natalie Reyes. <laughs> okay. yeah, maybe it's administrated. Mm. Uh, she is aware that my problem. Okay. And I, 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 I spend time. So maybe to resolve. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe next week she can fix it. Okay. Uh huh. So Anna, so you have. You have not done anything in the platform, no one, two, or three. No. Mm, okay. Mm -mm. It's a big problem. Okay. <laughs> then next week you have a lot of work to do. Yes, but I I will do. No, no. problem. Yes. No. Okay. Yes. The important the important is that they fix the, the email. That way you can participate. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's Teacher. the most important. Yes. A uh, question: Can you remember when does the this module will end? In two weeks, Thursday. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. Which so day? Fifteen days. Exactly fifteen days today, because today is Thursday. So in two weeks. Until Jan twenty second. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I think Thank uh -huh. you. because today is. The 8th, 15, 22nd, yes. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome, Christian. Okay. Anybody else has problems or something with the platform? Or questions? All good. All good. All right. Then let's go ahead and begin. Um, today, we're going to finish off the reading. We're going to read one more time and answer the questions. And then we're going to begin the exam. Okay. So the first part is the reading. Let's read again. Make sure that it's clear. All of the information and all of the words. We have six paragraphs. Who's going to read paragraph number one? Me, teacher, if you want. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, there, there was a time when... Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there, was, there was a time when no one knew the name Harry Potter. Now the adventure of this extraordinary student at Howard School of Witchcraft and, Whips, and Wizardry are read in over 45 languages, including Russian, Thai, and even Asian Greek. No one can explain the Harry Potter phenomenon 
Not even J.K. Rowling, his creator. Thank you very much. Any vocabulary, any words you don't know? Anyone? Um, no, it's okay, everything. Okay, great. Who's paragraph number two? Hey, teacher. Okay, Anna. Okay. J.K. J.K. <laughs> Rowling was born in England in 1965 from a young age. She knew they wanted to be a, a writer. No, a writer. Writer. A writer. <laughs> a writer. Mm -hmm. When she was six, she wrote, wrote her first history about a rabbit that gets sick. At the school, she used to make up stories to tell her friends. Okay. Thank you very much. Any words you don't know? No teacher, all is well. All right, great. Who's number three? Who's going to read number three? Me, teacher. Okay. After graduating from college, she worked as a secretary, but she didn't give up her dream. She spent her lunch hour reading history, mainly for adults. Then in 1990, on a train trip to London, she got the idea for the boy wizard. She said that she said he just appeared in her hair. She sounded cra 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 a cool, okay, cool cast of unit charted to help Harry Bar the four force of, of darkness. Okay, thank you. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, any words you don't know? Wizard. Wizard. It's like it's like a witch, but it's for, for men, like wizards. They have okay. uh -huh, for both men and women. They, they are wizards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's paragraph number four? Me. Okay, Christian. She kept working on this story while she was teaching English in Portugal, where she married, had her first child, and divorced a year later. When she returned to England, she brought back a suitcase of Harry Potter stories. Great. Any words you don't know? Suitcase. Suitcase. Like when you go to the airport, when you go on a trip in the pl in the plane, you take a suitcase. Like the luggage. The luggage, exactly. The big bag. Mm -hmm. Like a suitcase. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Good. Number five. Oh, everybody's so quiet today. What happened? Number five? Me, teacher. Thank you, Carla. After returning home, she was broke and living in a small, cramped apartment. She continued writing and in 1995, sorry, finished the first book in the series Harry Potter and the Sword series, maybe, I don't know, Stone. It was published in 1999, 97 and become an unexpected bestseller. Okay. Great. Any words you don't know? Cramped. Cramped is a very small space. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So if it's cramped, it's a very small apartment. What's the meaning of sorcerer? I never watched Harry Potter saga. It's like the witch, but for a man. Like in oh, okay. Disney. In Disney, the Mickey Mouse is a sorcerer. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm.
Okay, any other words? Unexpected. Unexpected is something that is not planned. So expected is planned. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Not planned. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, good. And the last paragraph, who's going to read? Me, teacher. Okay. I will try it. I'm not real. A little bit sick, but I try it. Okay. Rolly's life has changed dramatically. He has become international famous and now earns around 40, 40 million a year. He married a, a second child and currently lives in Scotland. Okay. Great. Any words you don't know? No, teacher. It's clear. All right, excellent. So now let's take a look and try to answer each of these. Here, in which paragraph would be the most appropriate? She hated going to school, but always loved to read. I think it's paragraph two. Okay, don't worry, we're going to double check. Paragraph two, okay. What about number two? When asked about this popularity, she said, I really wrote it for myself. In which paragraph would this be? Number one. Number one, okay. There were times where she couldn't even afford to eat. I think it's paragraph five. Five, okay. Despite her fame and fortune, she's been able to keep her private life. Number six. Number six, okay. She didn't have a pen or paper with her, so she had to memorize it. Paragraph three. Three, okay, good. And the last one, it was filled with 10 versions of the first chapter of the book. Number four. Number four, that's the one that's missing. All right, let's double check and see how we did. Okay, very good. Take a look. All of our answers are correct. If you don't have it, take a screenshot. That way you have it when you need to do it, okay? All right, any questions? No, teacher. No? All right. No, teacher. Great. Okay, so now we're going to get ready for our exam. Let's take a look at what we need. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five sections of the exam. Here in part one is going to be listening. We have two listening exercises. And remember, each one has four questions. So according to this, what do you understand? Listen and, uh, and choose the best option. And letter B, it's rewriting. That means that you're going to take a sentence. For example, Prince recorded the song Purple Rain. And we're going to put into the passive, changing the order and using the word by. The song Purple Rain was recorded by Prince, okay? The same thing for the first four. And the second one, we're going to use what we learned yesterday. Remember yesterday, we learned who, that, which. So we're going to use, remember how we did it yesterday. Don't get confused. Remember yesterday the same way, that way you can do it correctly in part two, who, that, or which. Then in part three, it's, about reading and choosing the best word to complete the spaces. There are two parts and it's the same idea. Choose the best word for each one, okay? Then in part three, here, no, here you have to decide what is the correct form. Is it with ED or ING? And then you use this verb 
with ed or ing, okay? And then in part D, simple. You read and then what is this talking about? How do we complete the sentence or fill in the missing gap? Which is the best vocabulary for that section, okay? This is about vocabulary. And the last one is like today's example. You read and then according to the information from the reading, you choose, okay? Now, there are many different sections. One, two, three, four, five different sections here. As you can see, it usually takes several minutes for each section. So today we're gonna start off with uh, 30 minutes to complete all the sections with our partners. We're going to have a, here before we go, let me make sure that we can share the screen. That way there aren't any issues. Okay, um, does anybody have any questions before we begin? Before you start working on the exam? Teacher, just yes. for be clear. Yes. Uh, we, we're going to make these uh, um, exams in, in a couples or a group? Correct. That okay. is correct. Uh, yes. Cor okay. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got it. I got it now. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, teacher. I have, I have a question in part two. Okay. We're going to write the complete sentence or just um, the word we are going to use? Ah, excellent question. So part two, yes, like yesterday, you have to write the complete sentence, not only the word. So not only, let me show everyone, that way it's clear for everybody what you are asking. Here, part two is here. And in this section, you have to write the complete word. Is not, uh, sorry, the complete sentence, not only the words, for example, who, that, or which. If you put who is not correct. If you put that is not correct. If you put which is not correct, you need to write the complete sentence joining the two sentences. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, great question. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, yes, I have a question. Yes, Laura. Uh, once we are, we answer all the uh, all the exam, we have to send the 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 final test. So, but my question is, uh, we only have one, uh, any mistake, uh, we can we can do it again. Yes, Laura. If you have less than eighty you need to do it again. And remember the minimum grade is 80. So if you have less than 80, you oh, look at your mistakes, correct the mistakes, and then you have the opportunity again to improve. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No teacher. Okay. No teacher. Okay, great. Okay. Then if there are no more questions, let's begin the exam. David, any questions? Laura, any questions? Laura? Thank you. 
Okay. Then let's go to part one and we will revisit all the videos for anybody watching have the exam or watch all the videos. Employees read the memo. Number three, the boy ate the guy. But before we go deep. Let's try one more time to share. There we go. Hi, welcome to another module. This time we'll study passive with by. But before we go deep into the topic, let me tell you what passive voice does to a sentence. Passive voice changes the emphasis on a sentence. In other words, we may say the same thing in a different way. You may be wondering when to use it. Passive voice is the best way to express an idea when, number one, we don't know who did the action, number two, there's no doer of an action, and number three, the fact is more important than the doer of an action. As always, I will ask you to stay around and stay for the explanation. We will compare active with passive, so you see the difference and notice the emphasis on each one. We will give you examples of each use, as well as the structure of passive voice. Passive with by, simple past. The passive changes the focus of a sentence. For the simple past, Use the past of be plus past participle. Active. The president opened the building in 1931. Passive. It was opened by the president in 1931. Active. An American architect designed the building. Passive. It was designed by an American architect. I have this scrambled sentence for you. My sister, this book, in 2010, wrote. Can you try to unscramble the sentence and make sense of it? I will give you 15 seconds. Great. So we came up with, my sister wrote this book in 2010. Now in English, we can say the same things in another way. Let's work with another scramble sentence and let's do the same and scramble it and make sense of it. This time I will give you 20 seconds. My sister, this book, by in 2010, written was. Were you able to do it? I hope you did. This book was written by my sister in 2010. Now let's take a look at each sentence. In this first sentence, which by the way is in active voice, the emphasis is on my sister. It was not Susanna who wrote the book, it was my sister. This book was written by my sister this book is the object, was, was or were, written is the past participle of the verb, by, by, my sister is the subject. In this second sentence, we're using passive voice and the emphasis is on this book. The most important fact is that the book was written. Now let's write examples for the uses previously mentioned in our intro video. Remember? We don't know who did the action. My house was broken into on Friday. Who broke into our house? We don't know. Number two, there is no doer of the action. He was killed in an earthquake. There is no doer of this action. The last use, the fact is more important than the doer of the action. My dog was run over by a car. What happened to my dog is more important than the doer. Finally, let's go over the structure of the passive and simple past.
because we're using passive in simple past, this is what we'll use. Was, were, plus past participle. Before we go, we want you to work on the following sentences so you're able to practice. Our sentences are in active voice. Your work is to switch them to passive voice. Please write them on our discussion box. Number one, mom prepared the food. Number two, all the employees read the memo. Number three, the boy ate the cake. Okay. That was 1.1 passive. Now we look at pronunciation, a few of the words. Hi, let's work on your pronunciation now. Notice how the letter O is pronounced in the following words. Pronunciation. The letter O. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how the letter O is pronounced in the following words. Not. Top. No. Don't. Do. Food. One. Love. Remember to play the audio program as many times as you need to. It is important for you to notice the difference on pronunciation. We want you to practice a little bit more, so pronounce the following words. Did you get it? Work with me. Lock, hot. Own, wrote. Soon, who. Come, done. Good job. Oh, right. And it's English. Hi, are you ready to listen to the conversation? This time we will listen to two people asking and giving information. They do so by using passive voice, but this time in simple present. Try to identify the sentences. I will underline them for you as soon as the conversation is over. Conversation. I need some information. Part A. Listen and practice. Hello? Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union? I think the euro is used in most of the EU. Oh, right. And is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Huh? Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Were you able to do it before I did? Nice. Now I want you to answer the following question. What three things does the man ask about the European Union? Write your answers on our discussion box. Hi, we're back again. Now we'll study passive voice in simple present without by. Please pay attention to the explanation, examples, and exercises. Passive without by, simple present. For the simple present, use the present of be plus past participle. Active. They use the euro in most of the European Union. Passive. The euro is used in most of the EU. Active. They speak English in many European countries. Passive. English is spoken in many European countries. Active. They manufacture a lot of cars in Europe. Passive. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. As we saw with the simple pass, passive, we change the emphasis when we use the simple present passive. Instead of saying, they use the euro in most of the European Union, we can say the euro is used in most of the European Union. The focus changes from they to the euro, which is what we're interested in. Follow me here. I have these passive sentences to demonstrate how the by phrase is omitted here. 
the euro is used in most of the European Union by the people. Cars are manufactured in Europe by manufacturers. What I want you to notice is that the doer of the action in each of these sentences is obvious or not important, so the by phrase can be easily omitted. So this takes us to our structure, and because we're using simple present passive, this is what we have to work with. Is are present of be plus past participle. Can you now take a look at the following images and come up with one sentence using passive in simple present? Please write your sentence on our discussion box and ask your teacher to check it out for you. Okay, those are all the videos from unit one to help you review. Now here's unit two in case you are looking at the exam. Before the exam, here's a good review of what we saw in each unit. Hi everyone, are you ready? Let's go on now talking about past continuous versus simple past. I want you to listen and take a look at this. This is a timeline. Notice both actions happened at the same time, but one action began earlier and was in progress when the other action happened. So we may say, I was reading a book when you came. What you just listened to and saw was the intro to this new topic. Now we'll play the audio program so you can follow and understand it better. Remember to stay there in the explanation and take notes. Past continuous versus simple past. Use the past continuous for an action in progress in the past. Use the simple past for a completed action. I was watching a good movie, but I fell asleep before the end. I was working at a boring job when someone offered me a much better one. While I was shopping one day, a celebrity walked into the store. I will begin talking about simple past because we have studied this before. So let's review. Simple past. When do we use it? We use simple past to express that an action started and finished at a specific time in the past. Read the following examples. They went to the movies. He came home. She drove my car. I will leave you with the structure of affirmative, negative, and questions just for you to have it in mind and practice it. Now let's talk about past continuous. This tense has more than one use, but this time we will use it to describe an unfinished action that was interrupted by another event or action. Take a look at the following examples. I was sleeping when the dog barked. She was working when he had an accident. You were painting the house when you ran out of paint. Take note on the following. We have these two words while and when. While it is usually used with past continuous and when it is usually used with simple past. In other words, we use while plus long actions, past continuous, and when plus short actions, simple past. Finally, before we go on using both tenses in one sentence, I will show you the structure for past continuous. Listen and follow it. For affirmative, subject plus was, were, plus verb, ing. Negative, subject plus was, were, plus not, plus verb, and ing. Questions, was, were, plus subject, plus verb, ing, plus question mark. Past continuous versus simple past. We often use the past continuous and the past simple tense together. The past continuous is often used with the simple past to show that one action was in progress when the other action occurred. I want you to take a look at this diagram and try to make sense of it. Now work on the following statements. You may do it with your own information. For example, you may say, Last week, I was driving when I got a flat tire. Remember to use both tenses just like I did.
Hi, this time we'll talk about some adverbs which are often used in storytelling to emphasize that something interesting is about to happen. Which of these adverbs are positive, which are negative, and which ones are neutral? Coincidentally, fortunately, luckily, miraculously, sadly, strangely, suddenly, surprisingly, unexpectedly, unfortunately. Now that you have listened and decided which ones were positive, negative, and neutral, we want you to complete the following statements with those adverbs so you can come up with creative sentences. Hello, this time we want you to listen to the following conversation. The idea is for you to understand what's going on and also to practice it with a friend or a relative. Once you do that, we want you to play the second part of the conversation and get ready to answer the question I have for you. What have you been doing? Part A. Listen and practice. Hey, Gina. I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing lately? Nothing exciting. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've only been spending money. I'm pursuing a full-time modeling career. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. What has happened to Pete and Gina since they last saw each other? Please write your answer on our discussion box. Part B. Listen to two other people at the party. What has happened since they last saw each other? Bob, how's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? Well, I just got back from a vacation in Italy. Italy? Where in Italy? Mostly in the north, around Milan. I have a cousin there. I see. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. In fact, I just got engaged to a guy I met there. You're kidding! Well, that must have been some vacation. Hi, we want you to go back to the previous conversation. Can you find examples of statements with have and haven't been? Now, we want you to stay for the explanation of the structure and use of the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. Use the present perfect continuous for actions that start in the past and continue into the present. What have you been doing lately? I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How long have you been modeling? I've been modeling since I graduated. Have you been saving money? No, I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending it. Moving on. Present perfect continuous is a tense used for. A continuous or repeated activity that began in the past and continues into the present. It emphasizes the activity itself and its duration. Let's look at these examples. Jack has been waiting for over an hour. I've been studying since three o'clock. How long have you been studying French? And last but not least, we'll go over the structure of this tense. For affirmative, this is what we use. I, we, you, they, plus have been, plus verb, plus ing. He, she, it, plus has been, plus verb, plus ing. When in negative, we need to add the word not between have or has and been. And as always, in questions, the helping verb or the auxiliary goes at the beginning, followed by the subject, like this. Have, plus subject, plus been, plus verb, 
plus ing plus complement. Have you been saving money? Can you now work on the following exercises? How long have you been learning English? Why are you tired? What have you been doing? What have you been eating? Okay. And then, of course, unit three is the last unit before the midterm. We can take a look at all of the videos to make sure that it's clear before you finish everything. I to do. Write it on our discussion box. Nice to have you back with us. So, can you tell me which movies are playing in theaters right now? Can you tell me which movies have you seen? The next conversation is about two people trying to decide which movie to see tonight. Try to listen carefully for details. What's playing? Part A. Listen and practice. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Now that you have listened to the conversation, tell me what happens next. What do they decide to do? Write it on our discussion box. Yeah, her last movie was especially good. It's probably one of my favorites of all time. Actually, I didn't see that, but I heard it was just okay. Well, I'll call the theater and find out what time the movie starts. Hello? Could you tell me what time the new Halle Berry movie is playing tonight? I'm sorry. The Halle Berry movie closed last night. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thanks. You won't believe this. It's not showing anymore. It just finished playing last night. Oh, no. I guess we're back where we started. Why don't we just see what's on TV tonight? That's fine with me. Welcome. This time you will learn about participles used as adjectives in present and in past. Please take notes and feel free to play the audio program as well as the explanation as many times as you need to. Page 87. Exercise 3. Grammar focus. Participles as adjectives. Present participles. Stephen King's books are fascinating. The last James Bond film was boring. The new Halle Berry movie sounds interesting. Past participles. I'm fascinated by Stephen King's books. I was bored by the last James Bond film. I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. Before we begin, I want to go over to what exactly is the past participle. The past participle is the form of a verb typically ending in ed in English that is used in forming perfect and passive tenses and sometimes as an adjective. In this section, we'll study participles as adjectives. Pay attention. I want to go over two important points. Number one, do you remember what an adjective is? Very good. An adjective describes a noun. For example, the white cat ran away from John. Adjective, white, noun, cat. In other words, because participles can be used as adjectives, it means that the participle as adjective also describes a noun. For example, the white cat was exciting to watch. Noun, cat, participle as adjective, exciting. Number two, I imagine you noticed we use present and past participles during the audio program. Let's work around that. 
When we use present participle, we add ing. And when we use past participle, we add Hi, ed. teacher. Hello. Notice what Hello. happens here. Sorry, we teacher. We took the, the verb excite. The electricity comes back right now. No problem, buyer. No problem. It's good. It's good. We're just yes. in there. Uh, I tried to join because I remember that we needed to complete the exam. But yes, I, yes I, this was I, without my my decision. <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. In this moment, I'll put you into the group. Um, okay, no problem. Okay. Right, and we turn it into present participle, becoming exciting. The same verb, but this time into past participle, and it became excited. I know you're wondering when to use participles in present or past. Here you go. Present participles describe a noun, and past participles describe feeling of a noun. I'll try to simplify it. ING equals outside factor that causes a feeling. ED equals expresses the feeling or reaction. With examples, I am sure you will understand it better. Here, I am just showing you the present and past participle. Interesting, interested. Tiring, tired. Exciting, excited. Now we'll use them in sentences. The museum is interesting. I'm interested. Work is tiring. I am tired. The movie is exciting. I'm excited. Please complete the description below with the correct form of these words. As always, write your answers in our discussion box. Jose, what, David, do you need more time? Yes, teacher, we have no a problem. problem with the exercise. I uh, is very confused because all is bad. <laughs> Let's see the world. I, I, rem I remember yesterday we just only uh, copy the the complete uh, sentence and then we um how do you say no no, no jose no esto es de la de la primera semana lo de ayer es la segunda the parte the boys it uh -huh, the passes the boys uh -huh, yeah but the passes boy is for 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 me is the the star wars movie this was, was movie was, was directed yeah. by George Lucas, but uh, the all is but all is bad. Sí, porque sí, sí la tiene mal. It is is bad. Uh, you have to you have to go with the grammar carefully. Mm -hmm. As an example, I will help you a little bit, only a little bit. Les voy a ayudar. Movies, okay. movies, singular or plural? Is plural. Plural. Vale. Desde allí ya saben que está mal entonces. The movies, como decimos, the movies were or the movies was? Ah, 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 para que tengan cuidado con los detalles, es gramática, no puede ver una palabra mal, okay? Okay. okay. All right, guys, go ahead. I give you more time, no problem, no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, the Star Wars movie. And this is where? 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 Uh, 
Ajá. I was mad. Y la otra. We were sleeping. But the but storm. The storm woke, woke us up. Woke us up. Okay. Ted was talking when his cell phone suddenly went dead. Okay. Yeah. Y vamos a la siguiente. La tercera parte dice instructions. Complete the sentence with the correct word. With ING, ED. Ok, aquí sabemos que para las personas son ED. I think animate films are fascinating. Fascinating. Fascinating, ok. We were all the world. Just the world. Just the world. Just the work with ING yeah. or ED. Yeah, we we're both interested. Interested. Interested con ED. Sí, yeah, ahora que no cansa de comer. Va, ahí está. I'm 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 sorry because uh, I think the person connection is un, unstable. Uh, what did he say? Hello. Yeah. He was saying that he cannot. Uh... The network is. You have issue with your internet, I think, because uh, we can uh, listen. You will. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Eh, can you share the? Let me check. Which I one? complete this section, the section D, uh, but the both the the first and the second one and the third one I I didn't complete. Which one? Uh, I'm left. The Egyptian pyramids, the the part the part number one, please. Mm -hmm. The Listen to the conversations. Check the correct answers. One. How was your trip to Egypt? Oh, it was incredible. I finally got to visit the pyramids. And what did you think? 
I learned so much. Like, did you know that they were uncovered by Napoleon? Before he visited the country, they were buried in sand. Really? Do they know who built them? Yes, of course. They were built by the Egyptians. And did you go inside a pyramid? No. Most of the pyramids are closed to tourists. You can't go in. But I took a lot of photos from the outside. Do you want to see? Two. Weren't you just on vacation in Africa? Well, actually, I was there for work. But I was able to take a couple of great trips that I'll never forget. Where did you go? I went to Victoria Falls, on the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia. The falls are amazing. I really enjoyed the trip. I'd love to go there. What about your other trip? I visited a huge stone wall called Great Zimbabwe. The area inside the wall is supposed to be big enough to hold a city with 20,000 people. It's the largest monument in southern Africa. So, what happened to the city? No one really knows. I guess it's still a mystery. 3. Welcome back. So how was Easter Island? I've never been anywhere like it. It's unique. What's so special about it? Well, first of all, it's very remote. Chile and Tahiti are over 3,000 kilometers away, but it's known mainly for the giant statues. Oh, yeah. I've seen photos of them. They were built by Polynesians who arrived there nearly 2,500 years ago. It sounds like you really enjoyed it. I did. It was like an open-air museum with the statues along the coast, archaeological sites, volcanic craters, and some fantastic beaches. Four. What have you been doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. I've been living abroad. I was working in Laos for a while. Laos? I just read an article about Laos. I've always wanted to go there. It's a beautiful country, especially the city where I lived. It was built at the point where the Mekong River meets the Khan River. Yeah, I think I read about it. Isn't that the place with lots of temples? Yeah, and fortunately, I had time to visit many of them. My favorite temple is called Golden City Monastery. It was built on the riverbank nearly 500 years ago. Okay, now part two in case you couldn't listen. Listen to the conversations. Check the correct information. One. I wasn't surprised that the last Lord of the Rings movie won so many awards. It was fantastic. Did you like it, Joe? Sure. The acting was good and the special effects were great. It was an exciting movie, wasn't it? Yeah, but you know, Marion, I think Spider-Man was even better. What? You do? Why? Well, I've always been interested in superheroes like Superman, Batman, and Spider-Man. <laughs> Did you used to read a lot of comic books when you were a kid? Of course. I loved reading comics about superheroes who do good things with their special powers. How about you? Well, I was fascinated by all Tolkien's novels. You know, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Maybe that's why we like to see those types of movies today. Two. Okay, here's some good movie trivia for you, Barbara. All right, what's the question? Who is the actor that starred in Cold Mountain? Oh, that's easy. It was Ben Affleck. No, you're wrong. Jude Law was the actor who starred in that movie. And do you remember who his co-star was? Wasn't it Sharon Stone? Wrong again. You're terrible. Is she even making movies anymore? Well, I guess I haven't been to the movies in a while. How do you know so much about Hollywood news? I guess I read a lot of entertainment magazines. Three. Do you understand what a teacher means when she says that attendance is mandatory? Well, I guess it probably means you have to go to class every day. You know, you won't be allowed to miss any classes this semester. Or maybe it means that the teacher will lower your grade if you miss a class. But what happens if I'm sick and I can't come to class? I don't know. Maybe we should ask her. Excuse me, Yukiko and I want to know what you meant when you said class attendance is mandatory. Oh. That means you must attend every class during the semester.
Four. I can't believe it, Lynn. This is the first time I've seen a Broadway musical. Pretty exciting, isn't it, Brett? It sure is. By the way, it says here in the program that you have to turn off your cell phone before the performance starts. Oh, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. And it says you aren't allowed to take any photos or videos during the performance. Uh-huh. I knew that. No cameras or video cameras are allowed. And did you know that you can't eat or drink anything in the theater? Yeah. If you want, we can go outside during the intermission to get a snack. That's a good idea. Okay. Let's take a look at what do we finish? Yes, we finished. Teacher. Okay, excellent. We're just checking with everybody right now. Excellent, Eduardo. I see that you finished. Everybody in your group or only you, Eduardo? Everybody in my group. Okay, excellent. What about the other groups? Was everybody able to finish? Uh, yes. Sir. Almost, almost I done. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. we almost finished too. Uh -huh. in my group yeah, almost yeah. finished. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, please finish today or this weekend. And then on Monday, we check the answers together to make sure that it's okay in case there's any mistakes. Sometimes it's the typing. Sometimes it's a small mistake that it, it you have it wrong and you don't know why. So finish this weekend. And on Monday, we check the answers and then we begin unit four, okay? Okay. Okay, thank All you. Right. Okay, thank, thank you guys so much okay, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice bye -bye. night. Bye. 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 Bye.